Welcome to Mary's Eclectic Interests. Today's show will be comfort food again. Yes, we're going to do more comfort food. And it will be cranberry nut bread and cranberry crunch. In, the, in this particular recipe, which is the cranberry nut bread, in the front row there is one egg, one teaspoon salt, one and a half teaspoon of soda, and one and a half teaspoon of baking powder. Next to that is one quarter cup of Crisco. In the middle, there's two cups of flour, one cup of sugar, and there is one half cup of nuts. In the back, there is one and a half cups of cranberries and three quarters cups of orange juice. With cranberry bread, it's like any bread. You just throw it all in. So there are certain instructions. For example, the cranberries. If they were fresh cran cranberries, it says to cut them in half. If they are frozen cranberries, they mention to put them in a um, food processor or in some sort of chopper. Now these, for your information, were frozen cranberries. And I did not read that instruction on there because I've never made this particular recipe with frozen cranberries. So I took and I sliced them in half while they were still frozen. And I discovered, wow, these are easy to cut when they're frozen. And then of course, by the time I'm getting to do this recipe, they are defrosted. So I'm not going to worry too much about this. I have cut them in half. The other little instruction, of course, we have our egg. And let's get this over here. There we go. And if, oops, get rid of my eggshell. And they always want you to beat your eggs. I've already preheated my oven at 350 degrees. It says this is going to make one loaf, but I'm not going to do one loaf. I'm going to do eight mini loaves. So here we go. It says mix the three quarters cups of orange juice. Here's my three quarters cups of orange juice. This is not freshly squeezed orange juice. This is orange juice in a can, in the frozen can, in the frozen food section. So here we go. Then it wants you to take your, your egg, and I'm going to actually blend this in a little bit into the orange juice. Now if I would have been smart, I would have brought over all my utensils in the first place. So I've kind of gotten that together. So it just basically says add everything together. So here we go. I'm just gonna do little, hmm. I think I'm gonna do the sugar next and see if that'll blend in. And I wanna make sure that the salt and the baking sodas and the baking powder all to go all together, go all together here. So I wanna make sure that those get uh, whisked in really good. They don't tell me to do this, but I like doing this a little bit better. Either that or I would prefer probably sifting them all together. Look at already it's starting to become kind of a batter looking. There. Now we're putting in some flour. Now I want to get this all in here. This one here mixing with a spatula. Well, I don't think so. I think I'm going to go still with the whisk because I think that gets it in a little bit better and then I'll switch over to the spatula. Yeah, that's about as far as I'm going to go on this. And 
I want to get all of that sugar that's settled on the bottom and all the flour. Now this is rather a big bowl, and but I do like to use bowls that are clear so you can see what's going on. And it's not a whole lot of batter, but it will make one. And this is add the nuts. Now oh, here's the nuts. I am using again. This is one half cup, and this is wal these are walnuts. I had to look it up walnuts because I also have um, pecans sitting here, but these were already been, these had already been put through a food processor. Instead of doing my nuts every time that I cook, I have a tendency to buy a bag of them. Well, look, I have a whole one that didn't make it through. I can eat that one. And then that way I don't have to do it every time I, I decide to bake. They're already broken up. Now, these were frozen, so I'll probably end up with, just like blueberries, I said put them in frozen. Just add extra time. Don't defrost them. Well, this is what happens when you defrost something. It, uh, the red dye or the dye that's in, in your berries, it's into the batter. Now this isn't too bad because cranberries aren't real juicy. I could smell the orange juice that's in here. Now what I'm going to be doing, and here's how I'll, I'll go like this so you can see it. As I mentioned, I am going to be using these little mini loaf pans. It says it, to bake it one and a half hours if you make it into one large... Oh, I forgot something. <gasps> Shame on me. It's sitting over here and I totally forgot. I'm glad I glanced over. And this happens. This got, was set aside. I forgot all about it. It's the Crisco. I have to get that in there. If I don't get that in there, we're, we're doomed. So let's get this in here. Now hopefully this is at room temperature and will blend in quite well. We'll find out. Yeah, it is. It's going in pretty good. Probably should not be using a whisk. All right, let's go back to the other thing. You'll see me do that all the time, starting things out with one thing, and discovering it doesn't really work, and pushing something else in. But I have to get all that Crisco in. I should have put that in with the liquids. Then I could have made sure that it was evenly distributed. And that's what I like to do, is do that type of thing in the beginning, because you're never sure putting in later. Now you can see these big white globs in there of the Crisco. Now the original recipe asked for spry and I had no idea what spry was. It, this is actually somebody else's recipe but I made it years ago. Spry was a different company that made a product similar to um, Crisco. And so here's, here's Crisco. And what happened was Spry and Crisco, from what I read on the internet, were competing against each other. Spry lost and Crisco won, basically. <laughs> so I never, I thought, oh, I have to go to the store and look for Spry. But then I realized, oh, it's the same thing as Crisco. Nowadays, too, we have other things that are so much nicer than before. We have things like spray and spray oil and flour in a can. 
so you don't have to do all that by hand anymore. You just spray it. I think I've got it. I hope I do. I don't see any more white in there. At least I hope I don't see any more white. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to set this over. I'm going to get rid of some of these bowls. And now what I'm going to do is spray this. This happens to be Pam, but you can use whatever you want. Wow. Look at this. Okay. Woo! Last time I did this, I started choking on the the, the spray back because it does get in the air. So let's see, this is, you know, it never takes very long to do different breads. The problem is, is the prep work. For example, I didn't force you to watch me cut all those wonderful cranberries. I, I find that very boring. All you need to know is, yes, you need to have to cut, you have to cut them in half. And well, what else can I do on a Sunday afternoon when there's absolutely nothing on television? I have been exercising more because I have been eating more comfort food. I usually don't have this stuff in my house. But what the heck. Now I don't know how this is going to make eight of these. I might have to take one out and divide it amongst the others. or just get smaller loaves, which is all right with me anyway, being I'm the one who has to eat the darn things. Let's see if I can knock it down. All right, you're going to hear some clunking. I want those to go down. I want them to get so I can see how high up they are. Here, maybe I can flatten them a little bit with these. Because I want them somewhat the same size. There's no topping on this. I'm not going to be putting any nut topping. or This one's a little high. I'm going to take some of that out. This one's a little low too. Yep, there's still quite a bit of batter in that bowl, so let's get it in here. I don't want to waste any of this. Hmm. Here, I'll put that one in there. Well, I think that's as good as it's going to get. As I said, if it was in one big loaf, it says to bake it for an hour and a half. This definitely is not going to be in the oven for an hour and a half. I will set a timer for about eh, half an hour maybe. maybe, and I'll check it soon. Oh, I think I'm going to put 20 minutes. And then in 20 minutes, I'll check it. I'll put a toothpick in the middle. If it comes out without any batter or anything on it, then I'll consider it done. But I'll let you know at the end of the show how long I ended up putting these eight in. After 25 minutes, I removed my mini loaves from the oven. And again, they were placed at 350 degrees. I did overcook them a little bit. I actually put it on for 20 minutes. They weren't done, so I, I added another 10. But then I just decided to check them after five minutes. And this is what they look like. And I go, oops. 
So here are my little mini rolls. I will be taking these, wrapping them in freezer paper and putting them in my freezer. Here's one of the little mini loaves cut up. I've already eaten a little piece and, I'm, and you can see the cranberries in them. And as again, I put them in a little bit too long. So the crust was a little crunchy, which I actually kind of like. And for my second cranberry dish, this will be cranberry crunch. In the front, the ingredients are one cup of rolled oats, one third cup of honey. This is a guesstimate. I don't know how much honey I'm going to use when I cook the cranberries. So I'm starting out with one third cup. There's one half cup of whole wheat flour. In the back, there's a half a cup of butter. I've already melted it. 16 ounces or one pound of fresh cranberries. I had frozen, so that's what I'm using and far left is one cup of brown sugar. In this recipe they want me to cook the cranberries first. I'm not going to do that because that's going to be kind of messy. I can't use my stove so I'm going to have to improvise. So I'm going to take out the cranberries and I'm going to put those over there. We're going to do that later and the honey I'm taking out. So what I'm going to be making is what we're going to be putting on the bottom of the cake pan and then on top of your crunch mixture. So let's get this all together here. I'm going to put the flour, or the, this is the oatmeal, the flour, and the brown sugar. I'm bringing over a fork so that I can start blending this together a little bit. Now if you happen to see a band-aid on my thumb here, it's because I went and cut myself when I was cutting the butter up to put it in the microwave. Instead of putting in the half a pound of, or half a pound, the half a cup of butter, I like to do it in slices so I don't have to put it in there as long. So I accidentally got myself a little bit here. Just a little pin prick, but. And now I'm going to put in all this butter. And for those of you who don't want to use butter, you can use margarine. I'm a butter person. And as in my prior shows, most people know that I leave my butter up in the freezer. I have a tendency to buy things when I see them on sale. And I'm not always, I don't always do a lot of baking. I've been doing more for this show, more than I have, I think, in many a year. These recipes I haven't made, I don't think, since I, I worked prior to retirement, and that's as far as I'm going with that. I think this is going pretty good. Here's my eight by eight pan. And there's my cooking spray. You can use whatever brand you like. And I'm going to take about half of this and throw it in here and press it down. There. This is a nice little And because the butter was melted, it's not going to be crumbly. It's, it does have a, it is a little wetter, but that's okay. It'll, it'll flatten in here and it'll be just fine. Okay, put a little bit more in here. Rather have more on the bottom than on the top. over here. I don't want that little hole. Oh, now I've got a bigger hole. See what happens when you move things around? Okay, this looks pretty good. 
if the cranberry mixture goes through, it goes through. So here it is. And this is the bottom portion, and I have enough, I hope, left over for the top. And I'm going to bring out my little tiny, yep, this is going to be my cooking thing. Here we go. And I like this one better than my other one because I can actually see there's a little thing here telling you um, if you're on high or low. Right now I'm on about medium. And what I have to do, all these cranberries have to be cooked. And you cook them until they pop. You don't want them mushy. You do not want to have mushy cranberries. Because don't forget, they're going from here into the oven. So they're going to get more cooking. Right now, I don't know how much I want to put as far as um, the honey. So I'm just going to put in a little bit here. So I'm starting out with a third of a cup of honey. Now I'm thinking I should put a little water down here. It does not say that, but I am going to put in equivalent to just a little bit so that this won't stick on the bottom. Maybe a tablespoon or two, probably just a tablespoon. I just don't, I want something on the bottom here. Wow, don't those look pretty? That bright, bright cranberry red. Now a little, another little tidbit is that honey never spoils. You can buy a large quantity of honey when it crystallizes or you think it's spoiling because it's crystallized, eh, don't. I just throw it in the microwave, zap it, or you can put it on top of your stove in the hot water, depending upon your container. Not in hot water, but let's say you have one of these and it crystallized in here and you don't have a microwave. You could just put use a shallow pan with some water in it and set it in the pan until the honey will warm up and the crystals will disappear. A friend of mine, we're having, we had a discussion on does honey get old? That's one of the few foods, I guess, that does not expire. Isn't that something? Aha, uh -huh. I, I hear it. Now I'm going to turn this down a little bit. Some of these are starting to pop. You don't see it. They're not going to go pop, 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 pop like a breakfast cereal or something like that. Oh, I can hear them pop, starting to pop now. If I could tip this up a little bit so you could see it. Probably get myself into trouble doing that. Let's go over here. Whoa, now it's popping. See, it spit out. Yep, I can hear it. Whoa! Oh, get that off. That's on something white. Uh oh, got a cranberry stain over there. 
these are still pretty tart. I'm going to put some more honey in. In case you're wondering, I'm putting a towel over where this spit which happened to be on a white tablecloth, so when I'm done with this, guess what I'll be doing? Okay, I'm gonna just start squashing them down. Okay, I think this is it. We're gonna leave it here, I'm gonna turn this off. once they start popping to do it for another one or two minutes and here we go this is what it looks like and now I'm going to place this in here wow that is a lot of cranberries I would think that this would be more in a larger cake pan than what I have well, it says eight by eight dish. I would say it's a good, there, I'm gonna show you what it looks like before we get the topping on. Now this is kind of, here, I want, I'm going to kind of pick this up and do it this way because that brown sugar and I did not taste it but I'm, I'm going with the one-third cup of honey. I'm hoping with all a whole cup of brown sugar that'll leach into there from the top and the bottom and that uh, it'll add in, but I should have tasted it before I did that, but too late now. I'm not going to do anything. Hopefully I'm correct in my guesstimates here. There we go. Okay, well, I'm off. I'm putting this in the oven. The cranberry crunch is out of the oven. Here it is. I did, whoa, I did let it, uh, let's take this off. It's still really warm, but at least I could touch the pan. This only took me a half an hour, not 45 minutes. And it might be because I use a metal pan. So let's see if it's too tart, too sweet, or just right. Wow. Lots of cranberries. I'm going to put this over here. In case you're wondering, this is going to be my supper along with the uh, other cranberry dish that I made. The cranberry bread and the cranberry crunch of my dinner. Excellent. Yep, I used about a third of a cup of Honey, that may change for if you like something sweeter, but to me it's just perfect. Not too sweet, not too tart. Well, enjoy everyone. Until next time, this is Mary's Eclectic Interest. See you soon.